Welcome to Inspiring STEM's podcast program, celebrating innovations in scientific publishing and science communications. Our mission is to interview inspiring innovators and thought leaders working to improve upon the status quo and to make a real difference in the world. My name is Martin Delahunty and I will be your host. In this episode, I am chatting with Millie Formby. Millie is an amazing pilot, zoologist, science illustrator and bird nerd. She combines these skills to create stories that empower others to become strong voices for nature. Welcome, Millie, to the program. Thanks, Martin. Lovely to be here. We're going to talk about your incredible initiative called Wing Threads in a minute. But before we get to that, please, can you tell us a little bit about yourself, your background and your career path? Yeah, sure. Uh, so I... Uh... I'm, a, as you said, I'm a zoologist by training and uh, also an illustrator and, and now a pilot as well. And I really bring those three skill sets together in this project, Wing Threads. Uh, I grew up in Gippsland in Victoria, Australia, in, in the country. And uh, really, uh, when, I remember when I was seven years old, you know, saying that I, I wanted to be a zoologist when I asked my sister, you know, what's somebody who studies animals? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, after that, um, I really got into the art side of things before I got into the science side of things. So when I left school, I uh, studied illustration. I also uh, majored in uh, visual arts at Monash in, in Melbourne and, and majored in tapestry, of all things. I actually worked as a tapestry weaver for seven and a half years and it was during that time that I, uh, I actually got a repetitive strain injury in my shoulder and the only other thing I'd ever wanted to do was be a zoologist. <laughs> so I went back to uni and I uh, got a bachelor and then a master's degree in science majoring in zoology. Yeah. Very good. And in your early years, what what inspired you? For example, when you were a kid, were there any TV science personalities that you thought, as you saw, and thought, I want to do that? Yeah, there weren't really TV personalities per se. For me, it was really uh, people around me that I, I grew up with. Um, I had a, a teacher at primary school, Mr. Hogben, who used to take us for walks around the school and show us the birds and what species they were. He basically taught us bird ID and also plant ID and I just thought that was the best thing ever. So uh, that had a huge impact on me. And also uh, we had a, a pair of gang gang cockatoos show up in our garden at home in Druin. And I remember mum got a copy of what bird is that? And we sat down and we identified these gang gangs and I, I just thought wow this is amazing you know so that's that's really what got me into things and I suppose growing up in a country area where there was a lot of animals on our property you know we had, a, had echidnas and possums koalas bandicoots uh, lizards and frogs you know a lot of birds so I grew up uh, with an appreciation of the wildlife around me and was always reading books about you know Australian mammals and coral reefs and you name it and trying to draw pictures out of those books as well what a what a wonderful immersion in nature straight straight yeah. away that's that's amazing yeah and um we've we've just this month celebrated international women's day which mm. is working to improve diversity across all walks of life but did you feel as a girl and young woman that you were supported to pursue science as a career yeah, I never had anybody tell me I, I couldn't do science as a career. But that's not to say that in that career I don't see the hurdles that women face. That's uh, that's that's real. Uh, I personally don't have kids, but I, I see a lot of colleagues have to make that choice with their career. You know, their careers end up getting back with that decision to take time to have a family and... Uh, it doesn't have the same impact for, for men in that career path. So that's definitely a thing. Uh, but for myself in, in science, I think going into zoology, a, a biological science, you actually find that women are the majority in that 
particular field. Uh, I don't know why that is particularly, but uh, it's definitely a lot more women in the biological sciences and other fields of science that I've observed. So, I, th I think yeah. Australia d does particularly well with very high profile, prominent women in, in science. And yeah, definitely. I think uh, the, the rest of the world could, could learn from that. Um, mm -hmm. I, I just think in my experience, it's been particularly good to have uh, you know, very prominent women in senior positions. Uh, mm -hmm. in science in Australia, obviously, to inspire the next generation of girls and young women. Absolutely. Um, yeah. But it's good, good to know that you, you never felt any, any really uh, barriers personally to, although, as you say, they exist. They do exist. Um, yeah. 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 Um, and your love for science is combined with illustration, visual storytelling, and that demonstrates the power and the value of science communications, which is a theme through our podcast series. Mm -hmm. uh, at what stage in your career did you realize that this was the right career path? Was there like a light bulb moment? Um, I don't know whether I've had a moment where I've gone, this is it. I've just, <laughs> uh, for me, I've been someone who's always followed their curiosity and, uh, and their passion at the time. So when I went into art, I mean, I definitely had people saying, there's no money in the arts, you know, you're not going to get a good job in that. And I'm like, yeah, but this is what I love doing. It's what I want to do. I'm going to follow my, my passion and my curiosity. And, and the same thing with science. I had people saying there's no jobs in the biological science. You won't get a good paying career and whatnot. And I'm like, but this is what I love. <laughs> <laughs> and I, my, my heart has steered me wrong. Do you know what I mean? I think it's very mm -hmm. difficult to find yourself somewhere you don't want to be if you're following what you enjoy and what you love. That doesn't make sense to me. So uh, I think that comes through as well when you love what you do. It just naturally comes through in the work that you do. So when I uh, got into sciences, I kind of let my creative stuff go for a while. And then because I was starved of doing the creative side of um my practice, I started doing natural history illustration and that kind of got me back into the creative side of things. And then I started being asked to draw illustrations for papers and things like that. And uh, uh, my supervisor for my master's was uh, uh, at Melbourne Uni was asked to do a, a MOOC, a massive, a massive open online course uh, on course yeah. interrupt for uh, animal behaviour with another lecturer and they employed me to do all the PowerPoint slides and, and I started doing a lot of illustration for that to demonstrate uh, concepts in animal biology and uh, really loved it and I went, oh, I can see that my, I'm bringing my skills together in that and uh, I really loved the science communication side of things and I also realised <laughs> Scientists are not always the best at visually telling stories and telling narratives. So, uh, yeah, I really started to pick up on that and, and get into it. <laughs> yeah, so I suppose maybe that's the point in my career where I put two and two together. I see. Yeah, definitely. Um, and, of course, what drew me to you was your current wonderful and inspiring initiative, Wing, wing Threads. Yeah. And I, what we'll do now is we'll play the... Uh, uh, the video that gives a, a two-minute explanation uh, and then we'll, we'll chat after the video. Curlews, sandpipers, red neck stints. These are migratory shorebirds, but some people call them moonbirds because in their lifetime they will fly the distance from the earth to the moon and back again. Great Southern Land. 36 species of shorebirds visit Australia every year as they make their epic migratory journey from the north. My name is Amelia Formby and migratory shorebirds are my inspiration. Like them, I too am obsessed with flying. But despite how amazing I think they are, they're among the most endangered animals in the world because the wetlands they rely on across the East Asian Australasian flyway are being developed.
I'm going to fly around Australia, 20,000 kilometers. The distance that these birds fly from here to Siberia and back again every year. Along the way, I'm going to meet the people working to protect these amazing animals and their habitats and learn what it takes to journey through the skies like a bird exposed to the elements in my microlight aircraft. Because we're all connected, humans and wildlife. We share this world and we shape its future. What a wonderful uh, video, what an incredible experience. Yes. Um, so uh, t tell me uh, a little bit more about wing threads and how it evolved and you, ex you explained in the video the, the objectives, but um, yeah, tell me a little bit more about wing threads. Yeah, so uh, I first came up with this idea, <coughs> wing threads, uh, in 2015. Uh, I'd been working in shorebird conservation for a few years at that time and uh, I've become really uh, inspired by these birds, you know, and their migratory journeys and I could see that not many people had actually heard of them before and I really loved being part of that shorebird community as well and having those connections with people all through the East Asian Australasian flyway and I loved how these this bird migration, these birds would, would bring us all together and create those connections. And I really wanted to to share that with people and I was questioning, well, how, how do we get it to people outside of that birding community? Because it's really easy in, in the sciences. We often end up talking in silos and talking to the people who also study what we do about, about what we do. So I really wanted to extend beyond that. And I'd um, been talking to a friend at work about how he flew, his brother flew microlights and he was saying, oh, it's pretty easy to learn how to fly and not too expensive. And I'd never thought about flying before, but the idea must have like stuck in my head because the next day as I was driving to work, I had this idea come into my head out of nowhere that I could learn to fly a microlight and follow the shorebirds on migration from Australia to Siberia. And I went, oh, gosh, you know, I could actually do this if I decide to. And, uh, yeah, it kind of struck me dumb <laughs> when the idea hit me. And uh, I, I sat with it for a while and uh, eventually decided that, well, I better go see if I actually like flying and uh, book myself in for what's called a trial instructional flight in a microlight. And uh, I went and did that and I got absolutely hooked on flying so that was really the beginning of everything and uh, yeah the aim uh, before you know I thought well before I fly to Siberia I should do a flight around Australia and test my piloting chops and it's uh, that started last year wing threads flight around Oz and uh, it's really uh, about uh, sharing that message of the shorebird that we are all connected, we're a part of nature, we're not separate to it. And I think uh, shorebird migration is a beautiful doorway into that idea because the wetlands they rely on in the flyway are essentially a chain with links in it. And uh, each one of those links need to be needs to be taken care of for that chain to stay strong. And it highlights how our local wetlands have a, a place in an international context and that acting locally can have impacts globally. So lots of small things add up to big things. And I think that they're really important messages to bring home, you know, taking care of your patch can, can make okay. a difference. So, mm. yes, so really um, spreading that message as a travel around Australia microlight and the microlight then is literally a vehicle for uh, talking about conservation and what it looks like and uh, yeah what we can do for shorebirds to protect their habitat and, uh, and the wetlands that we also rely on as people. That's such a, a, an, an amazing initiative and the flying experience must be 
also truly exhilarating. <laughs> when you're flying, what do you experience and do you get any birds flying alongside you? Oh yeah, I get asked that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> and, uh, it's a pretty special little aircraft. It's an open cockpit aircraft and it's a powered hang glider. So yeah, it is exhilarating because you're exposed to the elements and it's a physical aircraft to fly as well. Uh, you literally have to push the wing forwards or backwards or side to side to steer and uh, it flies at a similar speed to what the birds do as well, which is those three reasons are why I chose it because I really wanted to experience what it's like to be a bird. So yeah, being up there and seeing the world from their perspective, it's, it's pretty special. And this is uh, the 180 days around Australia. I mean, this is a, a, a significant investment in, in terms of time and resources as well. So how, how's the project being funded and how can people get involved? Yeah, so it's fully uh, self-funded and through crowdfunding as well. So uh, it's current, I'm running a crowdfunding campaign at the moment just to give the project a, a bit of a boost. So uh, people can do that through uh, the Chuffed page if they want to. That's um, chuffed.org forward slash project forward slash wing threads. So, yeah, I really want to deliver these um, STEM incursions to students in primary schools around Australia free of charge. So the funding uh, enables me to do that. It covers my food, fuel and accommodation costs. As I, as I travel and also, you know, maintenance vehicles because it's not just the aircraft, it's also a, a car and trailer as, as my ground crew support. So, yeah, there's a lot of moving parts to the project that all need to be managed and, yeah, of course, they all cost money. So, yeah. yeah. So we should, uh, we should give you uh, give a shout-out to uh, your fundraiser next week. Oh, yeah. Um, in Marrickville, and this wonderful gentleman here. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's um, Costa Georgiadis from Gardening Australia on ABC TV. He's become an ambassador for the project. And yeah. You know, a Q and A talk together at Adventure Merchants in Marrickville next Thursday. Yeah, Thursday. Yeah. So for those of uh, uh, us not in Australia, he's, he's also a very, very well-known uh, 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 TV personality in terms of work that he does and award-winning as well. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so that's that's great great to have that, that award. And um, so how also are you documenting your journey so that, promotional video we saw was fantastic and um, can you tell us a little bit more about who's supporting you on that and how you plan to you know when you finish the project um, to communicate it yep so I work with a group called remember the wild they're a nature connection charity and uh, they specialize in natural history filmmaking so they are producing a documentary. We just got funding at the end of last year for a 10-minute short film through ABC Television and uh, Screen Victoria and the Doc Society. So that's going to be shown on ABC TV next year, which is, oh, sorry, later this year, which is really exciting. It's amazing. And uh, yeah. doing all the filming for that. I have cameras all over the microlight as well <laughs> that get the footage. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're hoping that will turn into a, a larger uh, feature film as well. So, yeah, really, what I'm really passionate about, and, and Chris from Remember the Wild is too, is uh, sharing the stories of what people are actually doing to take action. So in environmental messaging, you often hear about the problem and what's going wrong, but you don't often hear about the solutions. And I think it's really important to bring balance to that narrative because it's very difficult to inspire people to take action if they don't have examples of what that action looks like. And you need to have a vision of where you want to go in the future as well. So really uh, 
finding those examples and, and putting them on film. And that's not to say, you know, let's bury our head in the sand and ignore the problem. It's not that. It's presenting the problem and also showing the solution at the same time and examples of people who are on the ground and are actually working to make a difference. Yeah. And we should also mention, and I'll just show here your, uh, your book, uh, Shorebird, Shorebird Flying Adventure, which you published with oh. CSIRO. Yes, so that's the children's book that I've created with Jackie Karen. It came out last year, A Shorebird Flying Adventure. And uh, the main character is Microlite Millie. <laughs> and, uh, there she, you are, yes. <laughs> so she takes the reader on a, on a journey through the East Asian Australasian flyway to share how amazing the journeys of migratory shorebirds are. So, yeah, that was really fun to, to illustrate. Mm. Uh, it's a wonderful looking book and it's a aimed at school children and uh, it's been yeah. made available to school children across Australia as well. Yeah, it's aimed at kids aged uh, 9 and 10, mid-primary, yep. So um, you're, you're halfway through your journey now. When, when do you plan to finish? And uh, the big question is what will success look like? Oh, that's a great question. Uh, yes, I'm halfway through. I took off in June last year from Perth and I've flown to Newcastle so far, uh, which is just north of Sydney for those who are unfamiliar. So that took me six months. I originally thought it would take about six months to do the whole trip, but it's taken me six months to get halfway. That's why I'm running a fundraiser at the moment to give myself a little bit of a boost. Uh, so yeah, that's happening. I, I'm going to take off again next week and be heading north and going over the top of Australia and then back south down the west coast, back to Perth. And I think that will take me another six months. So I expect to finish around September, October this year. Yeah. And people can follow your journey on, on your YouTube channel. So I'll, I'll include links to everything that we've mentioned here, um, the promotional yeah. video and then YouTube channel, your book and the uh, the fundraising as well but um yeah the, the the videos you have on on the youtube channel are fantastic as well so again documenting your your yeah. journey so far yeah i live stream all of the flights to youtube if anyone wants to <laughs> join me in the <laughs> just go to my website wingfreds.com and i'll i'll I do an announcement on there of when the next flight's going to be and the time and if people subscribe to my email list, they'll get an email notification of the flight as well. Yeah. So, so again, I'll, I'll encourage people to to, to fund your work because it's it's so inspirational and amazing that uh, it does require an incredible amount of resources uh, to make this happen. And the documentation and the science communications around it is so so important to to actually show and demonstrate the value of, of what you're doing, which is which is amazing. Um, so Millie, our conversation has been fantastic. We could absolutely continue chatting forever, but I think you probably have some flying to do. <laughs> so I just wanted to <laughs> thank you so much for sharing your inspirational journey. Uh, we will be following you on your, uh, on your journey and I wish you incredible success in everything that you do. Uh, and maybe next year we might come back and, uh, have a chat again and see what's what's next in your big adventure. Yeah, thank you, Martin. I, I think that'd be wonderful. And uh, to answer your question earlier of what success would look like, I, you know, I'd, I'd love to see birds like rednecks, stints and bartail godwits become household names like pandas and orangutans and blue whales. Mm. I think that'd be, mm. be wonderful. So thank you so much for having me on the on the show today. It's been a pleasure, Millie. Thank you again. <laughs>